Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can make this scene and the process behind it. It's a pretty simple process and I'll go through a couple nice techniques on the way. For example, how we can make an ocean quickly, making objects float in the waves, and constraints like follow path and a shrink wrap constraint, which are really, really useful. So before I jump into 3D, I like to have a sketch to work out of, and it's just easier to have like a full concept of how the scene is gonna look. And it doesn't need to be detailed, it's like as long as you yourself can see what's happening in the picture. So the first thing we need to do is just to open Blender, and the first thing I'll make is the window in the from the sketch because that window will always be in front so it's nice to have that for the composition. The model is pretty basic so I'll just speed through it and once we have the window we can make a camera. For the resolution I'll make it vertical so 1080 times 1920 which is like the Instagram format so I think this is nice actually maybe I'll put it on 120 millimeters to make it more zoomed in. I think this is a nice nice place to start. And another tips for the camera is to go to down to viewport settings. For this setting, I don't know the name, uh, just turn it to one and this will make all the corners black and it makes it easier to see how the composition will become. And now we have a camera and window and something I like to do early is to get a base light and background into the scene so I will get a better feeling for how the lights will affect the different objects. Like it's really nice to know early on. So let's find a nice HDR to light the scene. I like to go to hdrihaven.com. Most of you have probably heard of this, but if you haven't, this is like, you can get so many HRIs or rather backgrounds that can light up the scene for you. So I think this is a nice HRI. It's it got some warm colors here. It has really nice like pink kind of shading in the skies and, and I think we can use this. So download it and get it into Blender and add a environment texture node and open the HRI we found. Plug that into colors and I think this looks nice, but it's way too strong now because I want it to be in the evening so we can take this down to like 0.02. And we also need to turn it around. So to rotate the image, select the environmental texture node, press Ctrl T and you'll get a mapping node that you can use to turn it around. I mostly use the Z axis to rotate it. So let's make sure we get the sun in front of the camera. And I see that it's kind of too high up right now. So if you move the Y axis, no wait, the X axis, we can lower it a little bit because we don't really want to see mountains. We want to see the sky. And I also want some more color in this. So I'll add a hue saturation node, put the saturation to 1.25. So when you got your background ready, we can finally make the ocean. So making the ocean is very simple. We'll, we'll just add a plane. We can scale this up and on the modifier, we'll just add a ocean modifier. This basically makes, makes an ocean immediately. I like to use displaced geometry because then I have a bit more control over the mesh itself. We need to add some more details on this mesh. So let's add a subdivision surface, put this on top, turn it to simple so it keeps its shape. We can take this up to like, maybe like eight, I think. And make sure the ocean is long enough so we don't really see the edges. So you can scale this up. And I like to make sure the geometry is nice and square. So I'll add some cuts here until it's like kind of square size. I think this is kind of like a square. Now with the subdivision modifier, it should be enough geometry, I think. Yeah, it's like more than enough. You can probably put it on six. Actually, seven, I think seven is good. And then just apply the scale with uh, Alt A. And I like to just adjust these settings until it kind of looks good enough for me. And scale down the Z axis to get the smaller waves. And to animate it, we can put a keyframe on time. We can do this by right clicking, clicking insert keyframe, or just hovering over it and pressing I. And then we can move over to like frame, maybe 240, put this to like 10, press I again. And we want to make sure the keyframe curves are straight. So if you go into the timeline, you can select the keyframes, press T, and on interpolation, choose linear. So now that we got our ocean, let's make some islands. So to do that, just make a plane and we can just add the multi-resolution modifier and subdivide the bunch. Make sure to use the simple button here so it doesn't change its shape and make it like seven maybe, maybe eight. And go into sculpt mode. We'll just sculpt some islands or mountains, I don't know. And I think these islands looks nice. If we click on render, we can't really see anything. So let's put in a light source. Let's make a sun. I'll just make a sphere, add a emission shader, make the color a bit warmer, turn the strength up to like 15 maybe. Let's put it behind the islands, shade it smooth, click on render. We can make it even stronger, I think. Put it on 250 and make it like really red. Yeah, I think this looks better. 
Now let's make a material for the islands. I want to see the light wrapping around the islands. So let's make a shader for that. So open the shader panel. So what I like to do is to add a layer weight. This will kind of add some light around the edges depending on where the camera is. To adjust this, make a add a color ramp. If you if you move this around, we can see that we're adjusting the, the Fresnel. And we can also brighten this up a little bit. I think this is good enough for now. Now we want to plug this into the emission strength on this shader and kind of make the emission shader the same color as the sun. Okay, this might be a little bit strong, so let's move this. And because the sun is behind the islands, a quick way to go about only making the light affect the top and not the bottom is to add a gradient texture node. I'll also add a UV map node so we can plug in the UV map into the vector here. I think I'll just UV map this quickly. So let's select the mesh and edit mode, search for project from view. Here we can see the UV map. And if we now move around the UV map, you can see that it also changes the gradient. So it's a bit strong here. So we can add a gamma node, make this like 2.5. I think this will make it a bit softer. And now we want to mix this in with this. So then just add a mix node instead of float. Let's choose color, plug the upper one into A and the other one into B and a factor to one and choose multiply. So now you see that it, the light doesn't hit the bottom, only the top and the edges. And I think this looks better. So now let's plug this into emission strength and see how it looks. Yeah, I think that this looks much better. So now that we got the islands made, let's put in some text so we have something to look at in the scene. Then just add text here and write something randomly. I just wrote serenity because it sounds sounds calm and it means like calmness, you know? <laughs> and find a font that you think fits. I think I'll use the Arial Bald maybe. And then we can start to edit this font. So let's press Alt-C and turn it into a mesh, convert it to a mesh, select it, extrude it up so it's a bit thicker and let's add a bevel modifier and put this to i like to use seven segments and nothing's happening because we have the clamp overlap setting on so disable this and now it will kind of go crazy we can turn this down a little bit and to make the bevel look nice make the mesh smooth and let's fix all these bevel issues so the first thing we can do is just turn this down even further, I think this is nice. And go into edit mode, select everything, click delete and choose limited dissolve. Make sure the max angle is on one because then it keeps all the edges on curves. Then we can just go through and fix different artifacts. When you work with bevels, sharp corners like this often makes artifacts. So adding a slight bevel here can fix that. And on the T we can see there's some weird issues here. So let's just delete, delete these faces, add a new face. Here's basically the same technique. Select the edges, control B to bevel. This is fixed. And if you look at this R, it looks really, really broken. Often we can fix this quickly by just changing how these cuts are on the mesh. So let's make a cut from this corner to this corner, maybe from this corner to this corner, and then just delete delete these two, so click delete and choose dissolve edges. And for this corner, let's just add a slight bevel. We see there's some issues here and that's often because the edges here are too close into each other. So let's just remove some, remove these four dissolve edges. And this looks completely broken, but fair not, just add a cut maybe here in the middle. And we can do the same on the other side. And we'll still see some artifacts here on the edges, but again, this is because these edges are way too close to each other. So let's just remove a couple, remove one here. Here we can move two of them. Same on this side, remove one here, remove two here. Now the bevels look really nice. So bring the text to the water, go into the camera and we can add a cool shader. And for this shader, I want to make it glass. So make the transition one and the index of refraction, the IOR on glass is 1.37. So we get the right refraction in the glass and we can turn the speculars down, the roughness down a little bit to get more of the light through. I think this is looking nice. We have to work on a readability, but we'll figure that out later. And now we want the text to stick to the ocean. So the way to do this is to go into edit mode, select everything, press P and separate by loose parts. Now we have every letter as its own object. However, the origin point is all the way over here for all of them. So select all of them and now go to object, set origin and choose origin to geometry. And now we have to make sure all the origin points is on the same height. So now when you have all of them selected, go into options and on transform effect only, choose origins and locations. And now we 
To line them up, press S for scale, Z and zero. Now the, all the origins will be in a line. And if we enable snapping here, make sure it's on vertex and closest. We can move it down, make sure it snaps to the vertex on the bottom. And now we can disable the effect only. Now we have the origins on the bottoms on every letter, but it still doesn't stick to the ocean. Select one of the letters like the Y, go into object constraint properties and add a shrink wrap constraint. This basically makes the object stick to another object. And for the target, press E so you get this eyedropper tool click the ocean and now it will basically stick to the ocean but we also want to make it rotate with the ocean so choose align to normal change this to Y and now it kind of sticks to the ocean so to copy this to all the other ones select all the other letters and make sure you select the Y last and now search for copy constraint to selected objects press enter and now all of them are sticking to the ocean. So I kind of want some more happening in the scene. So let's add a boat. I just made this very simple boat with a subdivision modifier. I also want this to stick to the ocean. So again, go to the constraint, add a shrink wrap modifier on target, press E, press the ocean. And also, yeah, make sure the origin is at the bottom or because it's a boat, it's going to be a little bit underwater. So I made it like almost at the bottom and also enable align to normal. I think it's Z on this one and now it's sticking to the ocean but I want it to move and of course we could animate this with like the Z axis and just make it move like this but I think a better way is to add a curve and make it follow the curve because then it's easier to art direct how it will move in the scene so just make a curve put it where you want it to be I think this is nice and then add a follow path constraint and you can see that's flying right now which it shouldn't do so to fix this move the follow path modifier before the shrink wrap modifier and it will stick to the ocean like normal and to animate it i like to enable fixed position and then you just animate the offset factor here so press i move it to one another point press i to keyframe this also make sure to make the keyframe linear so again select the keyframes press t and choose linear and now it's it's moving across the ocean but it's it's not really pointing in the right direction so let's fix this to do this enable follow curve and sometimes you have to play around with the forward axis and up axis to make sure it's pointing in the right direction so for me it's y and z and there we have a boat something i also like to do right now if you look here it's outside the camera for a long time so a quick way to fix this is to see where it goes outside the camera which is here and press I to put a keyframe and make a keyframe when it's just out of sight, which is here and go into the graph editor. I like to use normalize. And now we have these two keyframes. And if we now select both of them, press S to scale and then X. And now if we scale this, it will still go the same way. But when it's behind the camera, it will speed up and go to the new position. And this basically makes it not be out of sight for a long time. And this is basically a quick way to give it more camera time, if that makes sense. So now we have a boat so now it's starting to look nice i also want to polish the lights a little bit so i'll add a light over here i think i'll make it kind of blue this will help just bring some color contrast to the scene three maybe i think this looks good so we're still lacking some details in the scene so let's make some buildings and a lighthouse on these hills so i sped up a bit here but i just added some very simple houses here and a lighthouse plus two houses here with two small dudes. I don't think they will be really visible, but it just adds some in visual interest. And the models are really low detailed, but if you look in the render, they will be so small that I don't think we'll really think of it. So a landscape video isn't completed without birds. So let's add some birds. So first model a very simple worm sh kind of shape like this and make sure it has enough polygons. Add some bones, kind of like this I think is good copy this make it on the other side too and go into post mode now we can animate them we just want to animate them going up and down like this make it something like this so it goes up and down on both of these and we want to loop this so just select the keyframes go into channel go into extrapolation mode and choose make cyclic this will basically just loop the animation and now let's copy this animation over to the other bones so first just add a rotation keyframe on the first frame on each bone just select everything, click Ctrl C, click the other bone, Ctrl V, and last bone, Ctrl V. Do this for all of the bones. And you also have to make sure it loops on every single bone. You can also do this by clicking Shift E and choose a make cyclic. Do this on all of them. So now it kind of loops, but, but it kind of looks stiff. So to fix this, 
we can offset a couple of the keyframes. So let's select the bone number two on each wing, move it like one frame. So I just press G X one, do this on the last one, but this one will move two frames. So G X two. Now it has a bit more natural feel because it's bending a bit more. Now we can bring back the bird model, select this one, select the bones, press control P, choose amateur deform with automatic weights. And now we have a bird. It's very simple, but I think it's good enough for this project. But only one bird isn't enough, so let's make a bunch of them. So then make an object that will be the emitter, go into particle properties, click plus to add a particle system, scroll down to render, choose object, and for the object we'll choose the bird. And now go into physics and choose voids, and this will kind of make the bird fly as crowd instead of like single particles. And right now there's kind of a lot of them, so let's take it down to like 10, but we kind of want, want them to move in a direction. So to do this, add a curve, and for the curve go into physics properties, Add a force field, make it minus 10 and choose curve on the shape instead of point. If we click play now, you can see that the birds will follow this curve. And if you look through the camera, we can see it kind of flies like birds. So now we basically have birds in the scene too, but I still feel like we're lacking something. I kind of want something in the foreground. So I think I'm going to add some plants. So instead of modeling the plants from ground up, I like to go to CG Trader and look for some free models there. Then we can search for house plant and click on the free check mark and find some plants we like. I think these plants look good. So let's just download these and bring them into Blender. So once you have them in Blender, just place them how you like it. Yeah, I think this looks nice. I don't want them taking too much attention because I want the sun and the text to be the focal point of the scene. But having those silhouettes here just helps bring more details into the scene. And now the 3D part is basically done. So before rendering the full animation, I want to add some glow on it. First, just render as still image. So press F12 and close this render window go into compositor and enable the backdrop. And then right now it's just black because we need a viewer node. So connect image into the viewer node. Now we can see the image, add a glare node to add some glow. Make sure this one goes into the composite and the viewer node. Let's choose fog glow quality, make it high and it's quite strong right now. So to fix this, just take the mix down. So make it minus 9.95. I think that's nice. Maybe even a bit lower actually. Min minus 0.97. So I think this glow can really help just make the sun a little bit brighter and add a nice touch to the scene. And now everything is basically ready to press render. So go to render and click render animation. Now that the render is done, let's look at the results. And yeah, that's basically it. If you want the project file for this project, I've added a link in the description where you can download it for free. And be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. I'm posting a video about every week and I try to find new cool ways to make 3D projects. Thank you for watching.